This morning, health alert. A massive tyre fire sends thick black smoke across Melbourne. Tempers flare in WA's bushfire zone as cooler conditions bring much-needed relief. And high hopes for Kate Blanchett at the Golden Globes. This is 7 Morning News with Angie Azimus. Good morning. Thousands of Melbourne residents are being warned to stay inside with their doors and windows closed to protect themselves from potentially toxic smoke. Huge plumes of thick black smoke from the tyre fire at Broadmeadows can be seen across the city. Live to Michael Felgate at the scene now. Michael, the blaze has been burning for several hours. Okay, thanks, Michael. The bushfire emergency south of Perth has eased, but tensions have flared as devastated residents try to come to terms with their loss. Two people were killed and 128 homes destroyed when the fire wiped out the small township of Yarloop. It's not known if it will be rebuilt. Matthew Snelson is at the Pinjara Evacuation Centre. Matt, what are residents saying? Right, thank you, Matthew. Well, a man accused of assaulting a woman outside a club in Mount Isa has just been granted bail. Father of three, boy Alan Page, is accused of this attack on Melissa Abdu outside the Buffs Club where she worked. Her head hit the concrete and she was taken to hospital with serious injuries. Melissa remains in the intensive care unit. The case will return to court next month. Two people are in a critical condition after nearly drowning off Victoria's Phillip Island. They were among seven swimmers who had to be rescued from a rip at Cape Wollemi Beach last night. Melina Saris is there. Well, Hollywood's biggest stars are almost finished walking the red carpet ahead of the 2016 Golden Globe Awards in Los Angeles. US Bureau Chief Mike Amor is at the Beverly Hilton. Mike, have any big names come past yet? OK, brilliant. Keep us posted. Thanks, Mike. Next in 7 News, business and finance and why Hollywood star Sean Penn could be in trouble with the law. Also, William and Kate join the Queen to mark 100 years since the end of the Gallipoli campaign. A man will face court today after being arrested on a Melbourne freeway for allegedly stealing a van and evading police. The 24-year-old is facing 25 charges, including reckless conduct and unlicensed driving. It's alleged he stole a van before driving it down the busy Tullamarine freeway yesterday, colliding with a dozen other vehicles. To finance now and joining me today is Westpac senior economist Matthew Hassan. Hello Matthew, how has our local market reacted to the big sell-off offshore? Oh look, it's been hit hard this, so far this morning. The ASX is down a little over 2% in fact for the year to date. Uh, the culprit this time around, more concerns around uh, China over the weekend uh, with uh, the equity markets in China suspended uh, for trading on Friday. Uh, only about 11 of the ASX 200 uh, firms post posted rises so far. BHP Billiton uh, is down 73 cents, CPA is down $1.44. Uh, the Aussie dollars also slipped below 70 cents. In fact, we're trading just a touch below 69 and a half US cents at the moment. Back to you, Angie. Matthew, thank you very much. The Queen and Duke of Edinburgh have marked the 100th anniversary of the last day the Allied troops were evacuated from the Gallipoli Peninsula in World War I. The monarch was joined by Kate and William at the Queen's Sandringham Estate for a traditional church service and wreath laying. Next in 7 News, we'll hear from Roger Federer after his shock loss at the Brisbane International and football fans brave freezing temperatures for one of the coldest matches in the history of the NFL. Roger Federer says his Australian Open preparations are on track despite a shock loss to Milos Raonic in the Brisbane International Final. Samantha Stozer is among the stars on the court today at the Sydney International from midday Eastern on 7-2. And tonight, Hewitt and Nick Kyrgios take on Nadal and Gail Monfi in the exciting Fast Four format live and free on 7. The Seattle Seahawks' hopes of a third straight Super Bowl appearance are still alive, but only just. It was a chilly minus 21 degrees in Minnesota for the Seahawks' wildcard playoff against the Vikings, the third coldest game in NFL history. Next in Seven's Morning News, the national weather forecast with David Brown.
Let's get a check of the weather forecast now with 7 News meteorologist David Brown. How's it looking, Brownie? Yeah, good morning, Angie. I must say it's looking rather pleasant. Well, in most of the capitals today and tomorrow. In fact, let's go to our weather wall. We're going to fly off to Adelaide where it's cloudy. Got some light rain falling at the moment. Heading for hive somewhere near 34 degrees. Not much wind around at all. In Melbourne, cloud continues to build. We've got some showers affecting the outer western suburbs at the moment. Should reach the top of 34. Look, we're already there. 34 degrees. In Sydney, different story. Clear blue sky. Heading for a forecast high of 31 degrees. Brisbane too can expect clear skies also a top of 31 degrees. As we look at the latest satellite information, we've got some meandering troughs just affecting southern parts of the nation. This one is carrying some storms, some isolated storms are moving through southern parts of South Australia at the moment. This system will eventually bring a cool change to Tasmania and mostly the southeast tomorrow. Virtually no change across the northern part of the nation tomorrow and we'll see some cooler weather become established through the southwest corner of WA and maybe just the odd drop or two. Uh, major centres tomorrow go like this. More sunshine for Brisbane, up around 34 degrees. Sydney, another beautiful day. Fine, mostly sunny, around 31. Melbourne, cooler tomorrow and dry, 26 degrees. Starting to heat up in Adelaide, hot and, well, rather windy tomorrow, around 38 degrees. Cooler in Perth, one or two showers and a top of around 26. That's the latest weather. More coming your way in the Daily Edition, Andy. Angie? Thanks, David. <laughs> and that is 7 News to Now. I'm Angie Asimus. Goodbye.